isolated solitary woman in China opens up her mind thanks to city volunteers' companionship. City volunteers in Taiwan travel to the Philippines to supervise on-stage volunteers. Welcome to Dai Headlines. I'm Siri Su. Thank you for joining us. In China, there's a city care recipient, Hong Yuyan, who had to care for her ill husband and her son. After her husband passed away in 2014, her son also moved to another place to attend school. She then isolated herself. Fortunately, city volunteers have been visiting her every month, encouraging her to do recycling and join study groups. Therefore, she has found a new meaning in life and vowed to join the ranks of volunteers. When we first learned about Yu Yan's situation, her husband has just passed away. She was in a state of depression, and we felt saddened seeing her like that. We visit her every month. In the beginning, she did not smile. When we went to visit her, we interacted with her and talked with her. Gradually, her mindset changed. She then enjoyed talking to us. She said Ji is really good, since she no longer isolated herself at home. When I sometimes tell you guys that I worry so much that I can't sleep or eat, you always tell me not to think too much. You also encourage me to join city activities. Therefore, I started doing recycling and joining the study group. By attending the study group, I was able to calm my mind. I feel it's very meaningful. When I have worries, I want to go to the study group and listen to the master's teachings. She said that it's better to have a generous heart than a spacious dwelling. Then I feel that I've become more open-minded. Siji's sister told me to sell these recyclables. I said these would indirectly help students in disaster areas go to school. When I discard the garbage, if I find some recyclables in the garbage can, I will collect them. In the past, her social circle was very small, as she had little contact with the outside world. Whenever she encountered little things, she'd call me. She would only let go of her worries after she heard my voice and my comforting words. However, she has changed for the better. She has felt the warmth of the big Sichi family. She is able to pass the love forward and care for others. Sichi has helped my mother change. I hope that after my son graduates from graduate school, I can join the ranks of volunteers. It will be my turn to help the less fortunate. In Malaysia, a city care recipient, Tan Yi Hong, has been low spirited since he suffered strokes. His wife is from Indonesia and therefore has no other relatives to stand by her side. Upon learning of their situation, city volunteers have been coming to visit them and providing support. Moreover, they also assist Mr. Tan to do rehabilitation and overcome the hardships. <laughs> We used to run an electrical supply store in Karak. After he had a stroke, we went out of business because I need to take care of him. When he suffered a stroke for the first time, he was hospitalized for a week. At that time, he was unable to recognize us. After he was discharged from the hospital, he could recognize us but didn't know how to speak and walk. Unfortunately, when he had a stroke for the second time, he was unable to eat and drink. I tried to get out from the bed, but I couldn't. Later, my wife took me to the doctor. All that time we suffered the hardship. He had to receive two injections a day for nutrition since he couldn't eat. It cost 300 ringgits each. I felt helpless because I had to care for him alone. Hello. 
One of my friends introduced Siji to me. Then they are here to help us. I am from Indonesia and I am a Chinese. Siji came to assist me, giving me strength. If there's no one here to help me, I don't know what to do. Last time when we visited her, she was not in good condition, but now she's more optimistic. She was skinny and so was her husband. Plus, her husband felt uncomfortable in his legs, which worried us. Yi Hong wanted to give up on himself. He didn't want to do anything and eat. I asked him not to give up, telling him his kids were still very young. We always cheer him up, giving him encouragement. We try to interact with him, making him feel ease, and he listened to our suggestions. I have to be strong. I need to take care of my family. I feel very grateful for receiving Tsuji's help. <laughs> Without Tsuji's help, I don't know what will happen. I am so grateful to Tsuji. It's great to meet these kind-hearted people in life. Thanks for Tsuji Volunteer's help. Otherwise, I wouldn't know what to do. Seeing him gradually recover, I'm so happy. It's great to see him get better. In Taiwan, city volunteers from Dain District have been caring for families in need in Shuangxi. Among the families is the Lin brothers, who have been raised by their grandmother. City volunteers not only provide the Lin brothers love and care, they also taught them to care for themselves. For the Lin brothers, the volunteers are just like their family members. Let's take a look at how the volunteers have made a difference in the lives of the Lin brothers. <laughs> Here in Gongliao, there are many grandparents raising their grandchildren. There are also many physical and mental disorders. In fact, it's really prevalent in numbers. This road is already really narrow. Here you see, how can a car drive down this safely? I will always tell them that they really need to drive carefully. When I was looking at the photos of the home visits, my son said to me, Mom, you guys work really hard. And that Hong Wen, he's really focused on washing the dishes. He said it was because he was of a bigger build. Yeah, he was a bit on the chubbier side when he was younger. My son also said, oh look, his fat is all squeezed together in the chest area. I told him that it was not nice to say things like that. <laughs> <laughs> of course I'm happy, but whenever they leave, I do get a bit sad inside. It's also because not long ago, Grandma had just passed away. So I do hope that the volunteers can come visit more often. The 
The other day, when we were over at the house, I had asked him if they had any childhood photos. He told me no, they didn't. <laughs> it's too long of a period where they took care of us. There's no way that I can repay each moment that took place. But I think maybe the biggest thing that I can do to give back for what the volunteers have done for us is to become a certified teacher. Then I can return to teach in these remote area schools. This way I can help those kids who are just like me back then. Whether it be family issues or due to some other life events, they have led them down the wrong path in life. This is how I can repay the volunteers years of love and care. I think it's amazing that this child thinks in this way. It's really comforting to us, knowing that the little seed of goodness that we have planted years ago has now become a big tall sprout of great love. In Taiwan, an elderly father, Su Su Lian, is 72 years old. Since his wife passed away more than 10 years ago, he has devoted much of his life to caring for his bedridden daughter. Despite numerous hardships and the challenges of his growing age, he still remains devoted to her care. So the volunteers who have been accompanying this family are deeply touched by the father's love. <laughs> Ya Ting is 31 years old. That year she got pneumonia and the fever went to her head and damaged her brain. Her bones are soft and this is why she is bent like this. She can't sit. If you lift her up, she will fall forward. There are fewer people now, only me and her. My wife has been dead for more than 10 years. Now my job is to take care of her. I have to carry her like this. You can't do it another way. Okay, just like this. I have to have this special technique to see if she swallows. You can't feed her all at once. If we keep talking like this about her, she will soon become angry. She has the face of an adult, but her temperament is still that of a child. When I first came, I thought she was a baby, but when her father told me her age, I was really impressed. He never gave up. Sometimes when parents give birth to a child with problems, they may abandon the child. But he never did this. He took care of her for 30 years. He's not just a father, but a super father and mother together in one person. I am taking her to pray. Bless Ya Ting and help her grow up. Ma Zhu, please bless Ya Ting and let her grow. Okay, that's enough. Let's go home now.
The Tzuji Philippine chapter is going to hold a sutra adaptation of Water Repentance next year. There are more than a thousand volunteers joining the performance. The performance team from Taiwan went there to teach the onstage volunteers and held rehearsals in Manila and Cebu. <laughs> The same volume of sutra cannot be low. The steps of running to the stage should be done in an orderly fashion. Qiji Philippines chapter is going to organize the winter repentance performance next year. Volunteers from Taiwan are there to teach local volunteers how to perform. More than 10,000 people will participate in events. They will be deeply touched if more than 1,000 performers sing the sutra together so smoothly. The salmon atmosphere is created by everyone's efforts, from the outside to the inside, showing morality. Keep your back straight and look at the audiences on the second floor, inviting them to join us. Different teams of Qiji volunteers in Malila spend two days' time conducting their final rehearsal. The volunteers from Taiwan are so patient and they taught us a lot. Although we need to keep practicing and memorizing the lyrics, we have learned a lot throughout the process. I'm looking forward to seeing the feedbacks. In Cebu, volunteers from three different places gather together to do the rehearsal. Although the venue for rehearsal is very simple, everyone wants to seize the opportunity to practice more. Even though they don't speak Mandarin, they performed very well. Although they don't speak Mandarin, they can chant the sutra and sing it so loudly. I was moved to tears. Having memorized the sutra, they have deeper understanding. We need to always reflect on ourselves. This will not harm us, but we will lead a better way. Everyone holds the same wish to ensure the ceremony next year will be successful. This is to pray for the Philippines and also let the Dharma to go further in the Catholic world. Typhoon Morocco caused severe damage to the Kaohsiung mountain region. Many people are quick to blame the water diversion project, which through its tunneling may have weakened the mountain structures. However, the government's observation sees that not only Shendu Mountain has collapsed, many of Kaohsiung's mountain area has experienced collapsing. It's been 10 years since the devastation happened. How have things changed over there? Here's our report. <laughs> The explosion accident related to the Zhengwen Reservoir in 2007 highlights the danger of this project. This water diversion project, which slices through the central mountain range, is what many consider the reason Shaolin Village was buried. For two years, we felt the explosion twice a day. It rattled us to the bone. But Typhoon Morakot didn't just cause Shendu Mountain of Shaolin Village to collapse. The mountain above Gaoping Weir also has as much as 2,500 points, which also collapsed. Lao Nong River has more than 30 meters high of silt deposit, which blocks the tunnel opening of the water diversion project. The project has halted for about 10 years, but every time it rains, rocks and muddy debris will wash to the riverbed. The valley of Lao Nong River has completely changed since the Morakot disaster. The riverbed has risen, yet when we visit the place 10 years later, the rocks have piled up near 10 meters high. The current collapse rate is the same as it was in 2009. Basically, the river is still severely blocked. With the flow of the river changing whenever a severe rainstorm hits the area, the road built along the river prior to the disaster needs some replanning. Of the entire Nanheng Highway, there is not one meter of road that remain intact. 
Jiaxin region of the road was the most severely damaged, with over 50 bridges partially broken and over 20 bridges entirely destroyed. With the road between Jinghe and Fuxing Road on the Nanheng Highway damaged, a detour was provided, but it would give out once the rain came. Currently, a wall has been built along the lower lying road, but in the areas where damage was more severe, a bridge was built, 20 meters high by 690 meters long bridge. This is Lao Nong River, and ahead is Bu Tang Bu Nasi River. Next to it is Yu Shui River. The point where the three rivers meet is a complex water environment. Thus, this bridge is very important. Its name is Minbakalu, which in Bunon language means Bridge of Hope. The Bridge of Hope has withstood the test of the weather for the past two years. The road has been repaired, but the scenery isn't like the past. It makes me cry thinking about it because nothing is left. It's true, the mountain scenery cannot be restored. But the mountain roads of Kaohsiung have mostly been repaired though this is only the mid-term plan. We estimated the riverbed would stabilize closer to 2029, but whenever it experiences another severe storm, the stabilization time gets pushed back. If we can find a stable river corridor, of course that would be ideal. But before we find one, we should remain humble when dealing with nature. With the roads rebuilt, the Southern Water Resource Center has diverted farm water to replenish residential water, and emergency response cannot be forgotten. Back then, Morocot Rebuilding Committee listed disaster prevention as a major point. Headed up by the government, the academic community and transmission technology can help to decipher what level the disaster zone is. There are changes after Morakot. First is the rain level estimates has been more accurate. Second is the gathering of information from the tribal village, where not only the central government can use, but also the local government can as well. Besides setting up a warning system for land and mudslides, disaster drills are also important. <laughs> We hope to further improve disaster prevention methods. Before flooding occurs, all sectors, from residential to the government, must practice prevention drills. In coexisting with nature, we must be cautious and humble, as that's the only way humans should act. City volunteers in Joho Baru have held a carnival and health checkup in Fuduyuan community. They hope to safeguard the residents' health and also show their appreciation for the residents' support of environmental protection. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.